Local Eye Almost Live Zoom. Lights. Hosted by Amy Amanti. With special guests, Eileen Barrett, Adam Grant Warren, Susan McFarlane, and Roy Surrett. So welcome to the virtual Vocal Eye Almost Live event. My name is Amy Amanti. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Vocal Eye, your host for these Almost Live events, and of course, a member of the blind community and very proud to have that as, I'm going to say my label, member of the blind community. Um, and I'd like to, before we get into tonight's programming, welcome Deanna into the space and she's going to offer our land acknowledgement. So Deanna, the floor is yours. The virtual floor is yours. Thank you, Amy. Hello, everyone. As Amy told you, my name is Deanna Jestrin. I'm an intern at Vocal Eye. Um, my family comes from the Statlium Nation near Lillooet, BC on my mother's side and English Welsh descent on my father's side. Vocal Eye is presenting to you today from the ancestral traditional shared territories of the Musqueam, the tsleil and the Squamish First Nations. It's important to acknowledge these nations, to recognize their long-standing history and protection and connection to the lands that we now occupy. Connection to the land is vital to Indigenous people for so many reasons. The land sustains life and it's a great teacher for people. It teaches about respect and balance and giving back reciprocity. Indigenous histories and stories are infused into the land and they connect people to their territory. So the land also provides for us everything that is needed for survival, food, shelter, tools, jewelry, and even clothing. It's interesting for me to think about uh, the fact that at one point our ancestors were all connected to and reliant on the land for survival in the ways that we just discussed, you know, for ceremony, for shelter, um, for, for protection. We all relied on our oral land histories for navigation and to explain where we came from and to relate to new or different places. The territories we occupied provided our sustenance and protection, our medicines and our shelters back then as well. And many of the land ties were broken actually, as um, settlers left their countries and came to settle in North America, those histories and those traditions, those practices um, that were really um, central to people's lives were broken. And that's an interesting thing to think about. I believe that thinking about our historic connections to the land can help people to better understand the importance of land connection and protection to indigenous communities today, who these people continually, continuously and relentlessly fight for the protection of waterways and natural resources and understanding this connection and that we all come from this type of connection to land um, might help uh, us become more invested and involved and interested in this protection that is happening all around us now as Indigenous people are fighting to keep this earth safe and, 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 and um, protected over time. So with that in mind, I always like to, um, to get us thinking about things and um, really trying to relate in our own ways to Indigenous culture and community and the reasons for um, a lot of the ways that um, Indigenous people are, are communicating so loudly right now, like this land needs protection, the earth is crying, you'll hear um, that type of phrase used often, the earth needs our help, right? Um, with that, I'd like to say thank you for being here with us tonight at Vocal Eye, to each of you, I lift my hands up, bent 90 degrees at the angle, um, at a 90 degree angle with my elbows pointed downward, my palms facing forward at my eye level. And I'd like to say to you all my relations, thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me this time. Thank you, Deanna. Um, I, I, what else can I say other than I, I continue to learn and um, really value what you offer in this space. So thank you for that. Ah, 
<sighs> All right, friends, that was a, a beautiful way to start off our Wednesday evening. Um, it is tonight is Wednesday, February the 16th, 2022. And we're proud to offer you our almost live event number 72 tonight. Uh, tonight, we're featuring lights, which is a lovely touching but often humorous we'll say look but there's some ebbs and flows of the challenges of early alzheimer's and this is starring adam grant warren who actually will be joining us um, at the end for the q a um, we've got a couple of folks joining us at the end for the q a um, uh, but we're going to be jumping into lights any moment but before we do i want to bring eileen barrett into the space eileen uh, described this piece for us uh, as a, a vocal eye describer extraordinaire um, so Eileen, welcome to the space. Hi, Amy, and hi everybody. It's so nice to be here, and thank you so much, Deanna. That was just beautiful, and I just I I, I thank you so much for that. Deanna thank offers you. us the the most beautiful land acknowledgments every week, and it's so great for for me as a settler to like take in that information, to let it marinate, um, and to work on being a better ally. So um, I I very much appreciate it. It means a lot to me that that happens in this space. Um, Eileen, let's talk a bit about, we don't have a, a huge amount of time, but um, we're going to be looking at Lights tonight, which is uh, a, a film, filmed version of a stage production uh, that took place at the Fire Hall Arts Centre. Um, I understand that you saw this in person, though. This was something that was in person. That I did. I had the fortune to see it on opening night, and it was, it was very emotional because everybody, you know, you could see people just looking at each other and going, we're here, we're here together in this space, and at the fire hall, it is quite an intimate little space. It's looked on very fondly by the theater community. I think everybody has, you know, a, a real stake in, in keeping that space running, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was lovely to actually get to see a new Canadian play um, with, you know, a, a wonderfully thoughtful production, so yeah, and it just a sort of a cute aside, when I was listening to the, um, to do the, to set the cues for the filmed version of it, I could hear the laughter, and I thought, that's my very best and oldest friend I can hear in the audience, so she had to see it the night of the filmed uh, uh, performance that we're going to see tonight, so. <laughs> So just for some context for folks, because you did see this live, when was it live? And um, maybe you can describe a, a little bit about, you know, where the fire hall is and what, you know, what it used to be, mm. right. dot, 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 for folks who aren't local to the Vancouver area. <laughs> Well, my, my first experience with, the, with going to the Fire Hall uh, Arts Center, I actually did go to the Fire Hall by accident instead of the firefighters. We said, no, no, go back around the corner. It's the old, where the old Fire Hall was. Because they did actually did use, to, they, they still have the pole is still there, very carefully preserved in a corner. Uh, but yes, it was, it was where the old Fire Hall in Vancouver was and is next to the police museum. So it's in a very interesting part of town. It's it's in the downtown east side, and um, is a small venue. So it's only about a hundred seats. So it really does have that kind of intimate feel to it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So and Touchstone Theater that is the res one of the resident companies at the um, Fire Hall Arts Center. Its mandate is to do. Uh, first or second productions of Canadian works. So it's a, a real, you know, it's always exciting when Touchstone has something new to offer. I think everybody feels very uh, affectionate towards the company. And was it just this past like November, December that you saw the show? Cause there is yeah. a, there's a Christmas reference in here and we realize we're playing this, you know, mid February, but it's really, it's still worth seeing for the, for, for lots of reasons, but you'll just have to be like, oh, Christmas trees it's February uh, but so when did you see this and what were the protocols in place the protocols in place were we were allowed to be sitting next to each other cheek by jowl and uh we, uh, we still had to be fully masked everybody was fully masked except for the performers mm -hmm. so um yeah and likewise also too with the the Dolly Parton's Christmas Carol that that was live performed right after that in the same time frame that was the point just before we shut down again that we were we felt like we were allowed to go and and watch theater and sit next to each other and have that communal feeling and then right after the run of this show and halfway through the run of the dolly parton christmas carol show uh, we went back into lockdown pretty much so we had to go back 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 to to to, to doing it visually or, or sorry, pardon me uh, virtually yeah so. Yeah. It was a little bit of like a here you go, just kidding. <laughs> I kind of feel um, well, this so this show feels quite poignant to me is that yeah. 
Yeah, it felt like we were heading somewhere and then, okay. And so we just have to drop back a little bit and hopefully we'll be, you know, heading back that way now. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't, we just a couple of days ago, we got the okay that we're back up to 100% capacity that theaters are able to be at now. Still masked, yeah. of course. Here, here, here in British Columbia, whereas some other provinces in, in Canada have let go of the vaccine passports and let go of mask wearing and let go of like pretty much all the restrictions, but we still have, we still have some restrictions in place that are, our government thinks is for the best interest of our, of our residents. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, but it, it was, it was lovely that this show, I think actually got to have its entire run, which was great. <laughs> and uh and and I think I think you'll see I think it was worth it very much so it's it's it and and so exciting to be in an audience uh for you know it was the first time it was being done it's always it's it's always fun to be realizing that oh okay we're the first people who get to see this so in a way we all tonight are some of the first people who get to experience this play because it is the the premier world premiere production mm -hmm. And what what was it like doing the description for this piece after I, I imagine, you know, once you saw it in in person, then you have to see it several times in the video and yeah, craft it was nice because it was like revisiting an old friend and kind of going, oh, OK, any of the quirkiness of it that I thought, OK, that's because this is happening or whatever. Or so it gave me much better understanding, which I had been missing with with when we don't get that opportunity mm -hmm. when I was going back to do you know the Dolly Parton show live it was it was great to be back in there and seeing and feeling it in all those dimensions really gave it I think it it, it, it makes the ability to do the audio description cues much more um, you're grounded in much more knowledge of of everything that's going on yeah and I guess for some context for folks that aren't familiar with what Vocali does uh, in Vancouver out of outside of pandemic times is is live description so what you're talking about with the dolly parton smoky mountain musical christmas carol smoky mountain christmas carol you actually were in that theater watching the show a few times live yes. crafting your notes and then describing it live while we were all sitting in the theater whereas this one you yes. got to uh with lights you got to enjoy it as a patron mm -hmm. and then got the filmed version of it and had to watch that several times to integrate the description into the yeah into the video and the technique for that description is it's quite different as a technique because when you're preparing something and you know it, and it's going out as a video and that's great doing it live on the moment is like being an actor in the show because everybody's timing is going to be slightly different for each performance you're going to go with the mood for the night and and uh if you know if an actor suddenly says something a, a slightly different way or there's a you know just anything that can happen it happens in live performances costume like malfunctions yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. And go. Right. And, and you've got one chance to get it out. And if you're tongue tied or mumble mouthed or whatever, then nope, that one's gone. So you just got to catch up and keep going. <laughs> awesome. yeah. Well, I'm really excited about this. Um, I've had the chance to witness lights uh, before. And I'm really happy to witness it again in this format. So um, Eileen, thank you so much for joining us thank in the you. space. We may or may not see you afterwards, but um, if we don't, thank you so much for joining us. And friends, I, I invite you to sit back and watch and or listen to uh, our presentation of lights. So Rick, when you're ready, let's play lights. Due to copyright restrictions, this featured presentation has not been recorded. Please check below for more information, including links to the material if it is hosted elsewhere. We are back. That was lights. And I'm just waiting to see who we've got popping up in our squares here for our special guests. So I think we've got uh, Susan with us. Um, we should have Adam with us. I think we have Eileen with us and we may have Roy with us. So let's uh, get some square, squareage happening here. <laughs> awesome. Hello. Awesome, awesome. That sounds like Roy. Welcome, Roy. I'm renaming myself from info at Touchstone to Roy at Touchstone. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, makes no Hi, difference me. to me. <laughs> nice to see you in the space, Roy. Oh, Rick, you too. It's been a while. Nice to meet you, Susan. Welcome to the Hi, space. Hi, Amy. You too. And uh, Adam, nice to see you again. I haven't seen you in a while. Hi. Awesome. And of course, we've got Eileen joining us back. So congratulations, Adam, first off, and to all the folks at Touchstone and, and Sarah um, on a really beautiful piece of work. Um, I'm curious from a writer's perspective, Adam, is this 
is this based on a true story? Can I even ask that? I feel icky <laughs> asking that, but where does the idea come from? Um, yeah, the idea kind of grew. Um, the, the part of it that's true, to be honest, is um, is the fact that I'm from Newfoundland and my parents are still in Newfoundland and they're getting older. And and as they get older, I'm, uh, I guess I'm feeling the size of the country and feeling mm. the distance from them in some interesting ways and I really kind of wanted that to 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 I wanted to bring that to light and especially I mean the development of the play started before COVID right. um, and so you know COVID just kind of added a kind of an extra layer of tension and an extra layer of desire for Evan to see his parents much like I was feeling at the time as well mm -hmm. my, my my mother doesn't have dementia but it is in my family so I look to those things in terms of my potential futures as well and I wonder you know how I will go about it and what will happen for me and sort of my life and her and our lives together yeah uh, it resonates with me big time and it may resonate resonate uh, heavily with some other folks in our audience because Alzheimer's is, is in my family both both like dementia and Alzheimer's is in my family quite um, to, to the to the extreme um, and so I too look at this and I wonder what will my life look like when I'm an older person and how do I take care of those elders in my family now because we are also separated by a province so um, thank you for for this work because I think it's it's something that resonates with everybody even if you're not sort of experiencing dementia for for you Susan um, do you have any experience with this with, with, with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, yeah. Yeah. Um, my mom has Alzheimer's still, okay. and um, she's had it for a long time. I, I'm I'm under the understanding that most Alzheimer's patients are, you know, um, eight to ten years, and my mom is she's coming into like eighteen years. She wow. got it early, and she's still alive. She's blind and can't walk and can't speak, but it's been. It's been a real journey, just a real journey. It's it's sad. It's it's sad. So yeah, I do, I do. And uh, lucky for me, um, the character that Adam had written really resonated with my experience of Alzheimer's. And I know that lots of people's uh, experience is different, but um, I, I was lucky in that I really could climb into this character um, more easily than ha than had my experience been different. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a hand already from Tilo. So Tilo, why don't you go ahead and ask your question or share your comment? Just give Tilo a moment to unmute. While we're waiting for Tilo, uh, I'm, al I'm always like right on the, right on the edge here, right? The, the moment that's going to unmute is going to be when I start asking the question, but we'll wait for Tilo. Oh, Tilo, I think, I think you're unmuted. I think I'm unmuted, but I think I've got my voice down really low. Oh, we can hear you um, so loud and clear, have a my hard friend. time hearing you guys. Yeah. Um, I went through this this to, with my mom, and it wasn't so much the verbal stuff. It was the odd things that she would do, and it's very stressful mentally. Mm. And I, I would have to say the only thing that really kept me straight and sane was when I met my wife, Yuko. That helped me a great deal. So this relationship between Evan and Sarah really resonates with you then too? Very much, yeah. Thank you, Tilo, for sharing. Um, You're welcome. For, for Roy, who uh, is uh, with Touchstone, uh, artistic director at Touchstone, um, what... What does it what does it mean to put a piece like this on the stage after so many months and months of like nothing happening? <laughs> what was that like for for the uh, for the uh, the organization for Touchstone? Uh, it was an oasis of joy <laughs> to be able to kind of finally get it back into rehearsal. This play was postponed three times. It was originally going to happen in May 2020. And then we optimistically reprogrammed it for that Christmas and then the next spring. And then finally, we're able to do it, you know, in November, December of last year. And um, ironically, I think it really just made the play better because Adam had time. So we mm -hmm. kept working on it and we kept on kind of drafting it and, and then bringing the present tense of what it's like to be 
uh, apart from family members over two years because so many people have experienced that with COVID. So right. I feel like it actually added resonance, resonance. And Susan and Adam were on board. Well, Adam was obviously on board because he was the playwright. But <laughs> Susan was also on board from for, through this whole kind of journey of of postponement and cancellation. <laughs> so it felt really fantastic to finally get it on the boards and to have such a great warm response to it. Mm -hmm. Were you experiencing, um, uh, cause I, the, the fire hall is such a beautiful, intimate theater, but were you experiencing full houses or like what, what, what was the reception from the audience in terms of whether they were feeling comfortable to come back? It was mixed. It was like, we had a really, you know, fantastic opening with a full house. And then we went down to like 10 and 15 people for a few days and then it crept back up in the in the second week and that was one of the you know the hazards of the fact that it was still a, it is still we're still existing in a pandemic uh it was so great to be able to live stream it and make it more accessible because the fire hall is not the most accessible venue for people that are wheelchair users and nor uh, other dealing with other uh um ability issues so it was really great to live stream it. We also um, uh, transcribed it um, with um, surtitles mm -hmm. to make it accessible. And we actually, after the run, we ran it for two weeks online, which was also, it brought hundreds of people to the play that we weren't able to come and see it live. And that was really appreciated. And it was so wonderful tonight. I was I only thought about the last half because I was, I'm in rehearsal again, yay, yay. Uh, for the second time. And um, but it was so great to hear Eileen's um, oh the commentary, yeah, yeah, chinois, chinois, chinois. How do you pronounce that word? Chinois, chinois, chinois. chinois. <laughs> and yeah, many, great, many, many, so many beautiful touches. It was really great, and so great to see Adam and Susan because we don't really get to see each other a lot. So of uh, yeah, it was and, it, good news all around. For our American friends, I, I was thinking about this because right off the top, um, uh, Eileen, you mentioned a toque. And I remember being in Los Angeles a few years ago and I was like, gosh, it's so cold in this theater. I was there for a theater intensive and I was like, it's so cold in here, I need a toque. And people were looking at me like, what's a toque? <laughs> so for our American friends, a toque is a beanie. <laughs> so I learned this when I was in the States. A toque is a beanie, a beanie is a toque. So if you were confused by that moment. We even, I think even, even some of the, the differences between, you know, we say bum and because uh, it looks like, you know, when Adam, when Evan comes down the stairs on his bum, that was yeah. a very conscious decision. This is a Canadian play. I'm going to say bum. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Little what do the little Americans little. say, Eileen? What well, do the Americans say? have to ask the Americans who are watching because we have lots, but I think, I think it's butt, isn't it? Oh, but okay. Okay. Right. Or, right. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I said butt into script. Well, then there's the Newfoundlander idiom as Arse. well, right? Yeah. Arse. <laughs> <Down under> Arse. <laughs> uh, we've got a hand from Louise, so I'm going to let Louise unmute herself, and then um, and then I got a whole bunch of other questions, of course. Oh, well, this actually, first of all, I want to say just just tonight hit home, and so much. I mean, I've got elder you know you got I mean you got older parents are still alive but I actually saw it with my dad's brother and the last couple you know he would tell and, and funny he lived in Vancouver Island so I mean and I'm on the mainland so in in British Columbia but what I'm saying is it was tough because he would tell the same story over and this you'd be on the phone with him for 45 minutes you might hear a story three times the same story mm -hmm. and or the, he'd ask you what you're doing or, you know, or whatever. It, it was tough. I got to see him on one of his last, the well, last, I went over to the island to take care over only, I don't guess just over two months before he died. And um, it was a good day and I made him smile by having my dog with me. Mm. I think that was a healer that day, my dog. And he, he, every time he talked to me, he could remember it and talk about her and it was like very unique but I mean I've seen it in different people in different situations but it, but the last conversation I had with him he yelled at me and told me off and day and a half later he was dead as something I have to live with and it was nothing I did wrong it was just yeah. him he was mad he was angry he thought everybody was picking on him yeah. and so it, I you know that 
that's why this hit home. It hit my heart tonight. And remembering my uncle, though I wasn't close to him in many ways, not all my life, but he, you know, it's still something that hits home because you never know I'm getting up there in age. What are my kids going to face? Mm-hmm. What am I going to leave for my kids to face? You know, but I just want to say thank you. This, I don't know. It just, you did a very, and you can never, you can never not do that again. You've got to fill that again somewhere. It's <laughs> got to be, because I think people need to understand yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, it is the premiere of, uh, <laughs> of this yeah. play. And uh, I, it is one of my questions, but maybe we'll we'll dot, dot, dot that for after a couple of other hands here of, of what is next for, for lights, right? And I think I'm sure that that is on Adam's brain, but let's take another hand. We'll go to Megan and then um, and then to Lori. So go ahead, Megan. That was very, very touching. And uh, it kind of reminded me of a friend. Um, her name was uh, Debbie, I think it was, uh, Debbie Hutchinson. She had, uh, she had that, that uh, disease also. And it's pretty hard. Especially for me, when like especially when those days you got angry and to you know, mm-hmm. she you know, and she would, like she would get angry and she would you know, it's a lot to do. I think it, um, I think Alzheimer's and dementia, I think it was, and other stuff. But uh, it really kind of got me thinking. But also got me thinking of uh, of uh, of Grand because she had dementia. Maybe a little, I don't know. I don't think it was Alzheimer's. I think it was dementia, but still, it's similar. It's similar to dementia, right? Mm-hmm. And they kind of remind me, remind me, remind me of her and kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's quite quite shocking. I have a, I have but a, I think it's packaged in a really beautiful way, right? Because you get to capture the moments. Because you know, even in my family, I know when I have conversations with folks who are. Who are living with with dementia that there are sometimes these moments where you get to share and they're so beautiful and then there are other moments that are confusing you know for those mm-hmm. of us who don't understand what's what's going on in the mind of somebody with alzheimer's so i think Adam yeah. did such a great job in writing these moments that sort of ebb and flow and of course um susan the way you characterized um mm-hmm. these moments where nancy was you know from sharp tongue to gentle mother kind of you know back and forth um, was really captivating to listen to. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Megan, for sharing that. It was very, very uh, uh, vulnerable. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, we've got a hand from Tammy. Hi there. Hi, Tammy. It was an excellent, excellent play. And, um, you know, I have a lot, I, I agree a lot with what the other others have said before me. I'm just curious, though, um, what, what sort of... Um, research kind of went into this because I think, you know, I think you were quite very, it seemed to be very accurate in terms of just some of the things that have happened in the play. And I I actually used to do some volunteering with the Alzheimer's Society of of BC and Vancouver here. And um, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of what happened in the play is quite similar to things that I've heard, you know, while volunteering there. So I just, I'm just curious to know what what all went into kind of putting this together in terms of like the whole sort of research or experiential front? Uh, thanks for asking. That's a really important question. And it, um, it's really my pleasure to answer it because um, without the good folks at the Alzheimer's BC, Alzheimer's BC, I really, I don't think the show um, could exist. Um, this show has a, a history that's longer than Touchstone. And I went into it originally as a fringe show um, that was site specific and I was going to sort of base it on my experience with my grandmother and then in the process of that I realized like my sort of tangential experience with my grandmother wasn't enough to build a show on and uh, and I needed more so I withdrew from the fringe thankfully um, with all the love in the world for the fringe um, I withdrew from the fringe and I went to Halls BC and I said this is the show that I'm doing and this is the sort of the the goal, and this is where it'll end up, and this is when, <laughs> back when it was supposed to be staged in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and they connected me with, you know, probably at least 10 folks um, who were at various stages of, 
um, the condition as well as um, as well as their caregivers and care partners um, and partner partners. Um, and they just from all angles shone all kinds of light. Um, and uh, one woman in particular, some of them have chosen to remain anonymous, but I will take all of the hats I'll wear everywhere in the context of the show. I'll take them off to a woman named um, Lynn Jackson. And Lynn was with me from initial development of the show in its current iteration, right up to she was in the audience and sort of actively participating in our feedback, our talkbacks. Um, and she was instrumental. They were all instrumental. But when I do need to say that one of the things, um, a lot of this, this, you know, ebb and flow and joy and sorrow, um, a lot of that came from then too, because one of the things I sort of learned to ask in the context of the show or in the context of the research was, you know, what do you feel is, uh, is missing from the narrative of Alzheimer's that you see represented in terms of the media? And, and the one thing that almost every, everyone came back with, it was the notion of that joy and that humor that you get to kind of experience and the sort of the unexpected laughter. Mm -hmm. And they said, everybody wants to sort of capture the tragedy and weep over it. And it is tragic and it's a horrible condition, but, um, but they were just like, it's important to be funny because it, because it is funny. It's important to hold on to the humor as well. And you need to make space for that. So I really kind of brought that into the room and made it my mission to just hey, hold Google, on to the stop. funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey Again. Google, what time is it? Oh, sorry, Tilo is un unmuted, so maybe we. Can oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay, Tilo. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think that that's super important because you're absolutely right. What one of my family members um, diminished quite quickly and was was ha was having to be put into a, a home <laughs> where this is exactly what what Nancy's character, well, what Susan you say is Nancy in the pieces. If I ever stare at a picture and I think it's a window. Like, don't let that happen. And that's exactly what this place was. People were in their chairs, staring off into nothingness. Um, and my, this is my, my great aunt. And she was living at a time where, you know, she was back with her nine brothers and sisters on the farm in Saskatchewan. And she was just living a life of fun, right? She didn't had no concept of her husband dying and her kids dying. And she was back in her childhood years. And so spending time with her in some of those moments was a little bit like a history lesson and it was kind mm -hmm. of beautiful. So I really appreciate that reminder that there are, even though it's a really difficult thing for families to go to, through, that there are still some gifts in there that we can appreciate from our families that go through this. Um, for, the, for, for Adam and for Susan, in terms of performing back on a stage after being, you know, <laughs> not on a stage for a long time, what was that like for each of you? Is there a hesitancy to go back or would you just embrace it with <laughs> full arms or Adam, how about for you? I had to adjust my diet, actually. Ah! I had to, I had to like, um, I had to train a little bit. I hooked up with a trainer for the show because I, I was so inactive um, sort of in, in COVID time uh, that I had to sort of get back to myself. And yeah. one of the things I had to do to get back to myself was I had stopped drinking coffee and I stopped eating a lot of spicy foods and stuff because one of the things that I was doing leading up to the show was a lot of this. <coughs> ah, that little I'm reflux still doing cough. it now. The little yeah. reflux, right? Uh, I just spent uh, the last month at my in-laws eating a lot of spicy food and not getting a lot of physical activity. So I'm back where I was again. But uh, but yeah, I really had to sort of pay attention to what I was putting in my body and um, and look at that kind of stuff too. But in terms of the hesitancy to get back, I was just, no, I think I was just raring to go. Yeah. And, and you actually got to get through the whole run before we went into lockdown here again. Yeah. Yeah. We so, just like, snuck, in, <laughs> snuck in under there. Yeah. Not, some were not so lucky. So uh, that's, that's fantastic. For, how about for you, Susan? What was that like? I was terrified actually. Yeah. I was really nervous because Nancy, Nancy has a lot. She talks a lot. And yeah. um yeah, so I worked for I worked really really hard for two weeks before we went into rehearsal. I tried to get off book, with, which was really as soon as I tried to move and figure out the character. Of course, the lines went out the window. But yeah, I was nervous. Two years is a long time to not be on stage. Mm -hmm. And um, but I must say that it was it's definitely one of the you know it was exhilarating. It was so exhilarating. Um, I'm sorry we had such small houses and that people I understand people were nervous about coming back into theater, but. We did some really good shows. We got great, you know, critical response every night. 
it was a it was a lot of fun but i was terrified going in yeah i didn't know if i was up to it either like lots of nights i don't sleep very well you know i'm in my mid 60s and i was like oh my god am i gonna have to get up in the morning and go into work <laughs> whatever you know yeah, yeah you have to that's what you do <laughs> it was fine it was great um okay i think we've got Lori back with us lori has been popping in and out and now Lori's disappeared so uh let's go to ruth ruth has a hand Okay, Ruth and then Lori. Lori, stay put. We're coming to you. <laughs> can, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can hear you, Ruth. Okay, so um, I just wanted to say um, beautiful uh, play, fantastic. And um, a special moment for me was that uh, moment of letting go, um, which I think is just so critical sometimes when we're dealing with people who have uh, intellectual challenges of any kind. Um, when uh, mother said good night, Henry, and of course it's not Henry, and he's about to protest, but uh, Sarah squeezes his arm, and he said he yeah kind of thinks okay, this one I can let go, and it's so important I think to be able to make those choices. That was um, poignant for me. Thanks so much for that. Mm. Thank you, Ruth. Very well put. Uh, Lori has a hand, so question or comment from Lori. Well, comment. Um, I had an aunt who has been gone almost 22 years that died of Alzheimer's. And uh, she was only 65 at the time, which is very young for Alzheimer's. And so seeing this, this reminds me of what she went through because she was a school teacher before mm -hmm. she got Alzheimer's. She taught special education for a good 15 years. And to give up her job for, you know, because of the all times was very hard for her. So seeing this kind of, this shows me again, what she had to go through before it was, before, before the end of it was for her. So it, is, it brought, back, brought back some good memories of her before she had the all times. Thank you for sharing, Lori. Uh, Maria, we have a hand from Maria. Hello, Amy. How are you? I'm good, Maria. How are you tonight? Happy Wednesday to you. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> I wanted to share a moment. I have my best, best friend, and she's had Alzheimer's for the past eight years, and I miss her terribly. Mm -hmm. But um, occasionally I go visit her, and, and um, she's very clever. So for about five years, she covered up very well, and she's very charming and clever. So, you know, another five years. So she's had this now for a good 11 years. What I was going to say was I went to see her last week and, and uh, finally after 18 months and I hugged her and she said she didn't say anything and her eyes didn't show much emotion. But then I was going to leave and I said, oh, Margie, it's so, you know, just love you so much. And she goes, I may not know your name, but my spirit loves you. Maria, what a gift. You know, oh, what a gift. Oh. And that's Margie. You know, that, that's Margie. That was Margie throughout the whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, they're in there. You know, they're in there. So, yeah, special moments. It's a so, great yeah, line. Just, I will remember that as yeah, long as Just be present. Yeah, just be present. Oh, yeah. I, mean, it's I, like Maria, I, I think, Maria, that um, it's like um, having a baby. Like the babies don't know who you are either, but they know when they're being loved, right? Yeah. Mm. That it's really important just to keep loving um, because they, they, people know when they're being loved, even when they, when they start oh, to lose sure. their minds. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because you know, I've seen her throughout the years. You know, I think two years ago when I saw her, we still brush. managed to have a conversation, but it's been a long time, you know, so for her to say, you know, I may not remember your name, but my spirit mm -hmm. loves you. I thought, that's my friend. That's my buddy, you know? Yeah, that's oh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it warms my heart, Maria. Thank you for sharing that. Ah, it warms my heart all the time. I miss yeah. my friends still. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely play. Thank you so much. And it's great information. You know, it's great information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, oh gosh, we've got another hand. Okay, we'll take a hand from Nancy next. Go ahead, Nancy. Question or comment from Nancy. Oh, we got you. You're unmuted, Nancy. I'd like to say thank you. This brought back my memory with my mom. She passed away two years ago with dementia. I was an Alzheimer's, but it started with a stroke. And my mom used to be so loving. 
And and ever since I visit her and everything else, I was always scared because she would come up with these weird things to say something, not to be mean or nothing, but she never swore or never said anything. The first word she'd say, shut up, shut up. I said, mom, that's swearing, but that's not swearing. But when you put something on the table, I don't like it, too salty. But then we grew, we grew up, like now it's been 10 years since we bought the she passed away two years ago. But I feel like, like we tried so much to help her out, but she always brought back memories. If she was a princess in India, she was, she had an elephant, she had, she was a dancing queen. And I went to India and I asked, did my mom really do that? She, and she's making stories up. She always wants to go home, work home. But it, this brought me back memory because sometimes your mom is so happy. One minute she's sad, but she never, she always showed us the happiness. But, you know, but at the end, she told me, I, she said, I talk too fast. But she doesn't understand me. So I thought, oh my God, mom, you're, t- you're actually telling me now? I mean, what happened to my old life of my childhood? You never told me I talk fast. And I go, yeah, and she said she loved me. And I go, oh, my God, I really talk too fast. So I really learned something from her because I, you know, now I listen to you guys, listen to the video. It brought memories about, you know, our parents. My mom could be such a sweet woman, but she never swore. She never hey. say shut up, but that was a bad word to our language, right? And she could say it, but we couldn't say it. Yeah. Thank you. No, you guys are wonderful. Thank you for showing this. It's 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 nice to see someone, you know, like what what we can do for our parents. You know, they knew everything, and you know, having to see this again and watching people, you know, it's, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I'm just so happy I get to see something. Other people going in the same way my mom was going through. Yeah, yeah. something that resonates for sure. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I can't wait till the next one. <laughs> On, Sunday. On Sunday. On <laughs> Sunday. Uh, okay. Yeah, the, 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 this is great. And I, I guess I'm curious about what is next for lights. Adam, what do you think? Any big uh, plans? Roy, I don't know. Ah! Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, um, so what I will say is uh, that, I mean, I, I, I believe in this work and I sort of, I want to, I want to get behind it and I want to find some other ways to get behind it. I also know that um, the fringe version of the show, the specific fringe version of the show, would have been much more portable. Right. Um, as, as, this is kind as, of seasonal. As, <laughs> yeah, as it is now, it's um, it's 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 a hard show to move. Yeah. Um, so we need to figure out, or I need to figure out, someone needs to figure out how to how to how to move the thing. And I'm I'm pretty sure if we could figure out how to make it go, it would go some places. But we need to kind of work on making it mobile mm-hmm. what do you think roy well i would say there was a little because of the what all of the different organizations all the different theater companies are going through across around the world let alone like locally there's been a little less um organization in terms of like people are still trying to figure out what they're going to do in the future mm-hmm. i totally believe this play has it deserves a, a a life and we've everybody who saw it said man this show could play all over the place it has uh you know it has all sorts of so much going for it mm-hmm. we don't have any kind of like immediate offers we had to make the decision at the end of our little short run whether uh, we don't have big storage lockers so everything dispersed now it can be put together it was uh you know we we have a great creative team that we're able to put it together without spending a fortune but it is a big show the requirements of making sure that there is an upper level and those staircase entering make it a little bit more challenging than some other pieces but i sure hope i think it might take a year or two because so many there's so much um uh, adaptation going on within all organizational structures and stuff but I know that though I know that we've uh, talked to colleagues and other companies that have said you know now that now we have a really good video version of it so we can actually share that with them which you know normally in the life of a theater run you wind up with a like a really crappy little one camera archival and we have a really good version we have the audio described version we have an action version so Hopefully, we'll be able to um, find ways to disseminate and share this beautiful work. But you know, I'd love to get these wonderful actors back in a room and uh, get to do it in other uh, other theaters. Yeah, I predict that as soon as we lose our lines, as soon as we forget our lines, we'll get another show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 
Isn't yeah. that that's the Murphy's law of it all, right? Like, yeah. Oh, now we're touring. Yeah, I gotta yeah. put those lines again. As soon as we're back to square one, that's we'll right. be yeah. invited to square two. Yeah. Um, Adam, yeah, that's, I, right. that's right. I'd love to to throw this in the space if you're comfortable talking about it because um uh folks don't know you like I know you. Um so answer the question, please. Are you a, a real wheelchair user, Adam? <laughs> You knew this was going to come up. Um, Did I? You're described as a wheelchair user, and oftentimes yeah. we have able bodied folks. No, I am I am a legit card carrying wheelchair user. I do have a, cerebral a palsy. Card carrying member. Yeah. How, how important was it for you to, or not? Maybe I don't want to make assumptions, but for me, it feels like a lot of teaching through osmosis. Um, you know, watch me do the things that I do. Um, so the audience is like, oh, okay this is how he gets up and down the stairs or this is how mm -hmm. he navigates. So was that important to you in terms of the writing to it was, you know, yeah. not call it out immediately, but just to have people witness what you, it's just, a, it's just kind of, a lot of it is functional living. Yeah. Um, and it's written in the script as functional living. Mm -hmm. um, that, that like, um, what I will say is that set as big and immobile as it is, is, is it feels crucial central to the show however we represent it in the future but it's only because that's the house where evan grew up mm -hmm. and it's such a you know it's such um it's such a part of that part of his life and for me the house that i grew up in that, that house in the house in the show is actually modeled in my grandmother's house where i spent a lot of time um the house that i grew up in or did most of my growing up in was much more accessible but i still did quite a bit of crawling around and the um it's an interesting thing when you grow up or when I grew up and uh, and you go back and as a grown man sort of crawling around the space mm -hmm. you know it's a different thing when you're an adult and you have to do those things in order to get mm -hmm. where you need to go which is what Evan talks about at some point mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it was important for me to see it or it was important for me to show it without pointing a finger at it more than I think I did I think Without I labeling it yeah you know I yeah. needed to mention it a couple of times because it was important to Nancy yeah because it oh, was yeah. important to Adam, how I engage with Nancy yeah. tell them about um, um, taking the ramp out of our set oh <laughs> right yeah um so the, an initial sort of build of the set right up until the last few days in the rehearsal hall had a, a ramp in it um and on the inside just to kind of make it theoretically, I'm putting this in air quotes, easier for me to get up to the door. And mm -hmm. I really super appreciated the intention behind it, but it kind of broke the illusion of the house. A, a there was that, and B, the ramp was so steep based on the parameters of the set that I couldn't actually use it. You're like, I could, I could but by the time I got to the top, I was like, <laughs> yeah. right? And, uh, and, yeah. See, and see, it was important that the audience see that you were in a house without a ramp and that exactly, you know, that exactly. it was hard for you to maneuver, right? Right. I, I, again, I appreciated that people were trying to sort of make it easier, but I was talking to the set, uh, the tech director, and I was in, actually, it was, it was the tech director uh, who, who suggested, like, why don't we just take the ramp out and put a bunch of put steps on the inside, too? And I was like, yes, please, let's do that, because that's, that's kind of was the initial intention. So yeah. in, in, in an effort to make the set accessible, they actually kind of, um, twit I won't say broke, but they bent the show a little bit because mm -hmm. we're so trained to make the spaces accessible that the accessibilization of the space actually got in the way of the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah, in the way of what it was you were trying to, to share about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I very much appreciate that because, I mean, you know me, anytime you're in a space with me, I talk about representation on stage and that doesn't mean that we have to label it but it just means that that it's there that it's present and that it's authentic and that mm -hmm. really means a lot uh to many folks who are community members um so thank you for the work oh well friends we've we've had a robust q a and um before i officially say good night and a thank you to y'all um we have a raffle prize that we give away at the end of every night and we have many guests in this space but since adam you were wearing hat of playwright and uh, actor, I'm wondering if you would be willing to volunteer yourself, or maybe I'm just going to volunteer you. 
uh, or volunteer you, I suppose is better English, um, to participate. And so this is super simple. Donna's got the name of all of our eligible participants in a bag, and she's gonna rifle in that bag. And Adam, whenever you wanted to pull that name, you can you can yell stop if you want, or you can come up with a clever keyword. Pull. Oh. And the winner is Nancy Slynn. Nancy Slynn, woo, woo, Nancy S, you are the winner of a raffle prize. Yay, Nancy. Uh, Nancy will connect with you offline to make sure we get you the appropriate prize to your geographical area. So thanks so much for participating. And, and again, thanks everybody for joining our little panel discussion and for listening to the comments from our audience. So thank you to Roy Surrett, to Adam Grant Warren, to, oh my gosh, this is so hard when you don't have a, have a list of notes, to Susan, Susan McFarland and to Eileen Barrett for uh, for joining us in this space um before we officially let our guests go um actually i can let the guests go thank you very much guests for joining us this evening and, and you're welcome to enjoy the rest of your evening <laughs> thank you so much thank Good you night, so great to see you all yay thank you yay. Bye, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank bye friends you. thank you bye so we'll stop well done amy now. you're you rock this Thanks, oh Roy. You're so, you're Thanks, so Roy. Maybe I'll be on a touchstone stage near you sometime. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Bye, Amy. Bye, Adam. Nice to see you. Vocal Eye. Vocal Eye.ca. Special thanks to our funders, the Canada Council for the Arts, the British Columbia Arts Council, the province of British Columbia, and the city of Vancouver.